hi guys i have missed you guys and you're welcome back to this youtube channel if you're new here you're highly 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 welcome do what to hit the subscribe button and click on the notification bell to be notified whenever i drop a new video so in this video we'll be drafting a full scale basic borders block um this is especially for beginners and anyone who still finds it difficult to draft the full scale borders block now as a beginner you should be able to read your tape you should be able to take measurements accurately you should know accurate formulas to get some of those measurements and also you should practice on how to also draft an half scale basic borders block so all of this video are available on my channel they're available on my youtube channel in the beginner status playlist so make sure you practice and practice till you become great at it so i'll be dropping the link to this playlist and to some of the videos on the description box and also on the comment section as well yes i will drop drop it in either of them or on both of them you grab so moving on um these are the major mage you need when drafting a basic bodies and each colors here represents the terms and where the measurements are taken why the black color terms are not indicated in this picture you know on this picture <laughs> so you will be needing your chest line your bust circumference your under bust circumference your waist circumference your hip circumference your shoulder to nipple which is also referred to as the bust point your shoulder to under bust your shoulder to waist measurement your arm size also referred to as your arm hole it's popular uh, popularly known as your arm hole yeah arm hole depth uh, your shoulder your top length and your nipple to nipple measurement which is also known as the bust span so with hearts much talk without boring new hearts <laughs> with my talks let's just dive right into the drafting proper You majorly be needing your pattern paper, your pen or marker for drafting. Now, if you do not have a pattern paper, do not worry. You can make use of a cardboard paper or a newspaper to draft this out. So when drafting, the first thing you want to do first is to mark out how long you want your basic bodies to be, how long you want the top to be or the shirt that you're making to be so for me i am going with 26 inches and i added one inch for aiming allowance you know you always have to aim your top check most of the free tops you're putting on um, the down is always aimed so you after marking out your actual measurement you had one inch for aiming allowance so that's how i arrived at marking out 27 inches which i've ruled out like this so i'll just go ahead and indicate here as my top length yes that is the shirt length or whatever i'm making with this um basic um full scale basic bodies so next moving on the next thing you would want to do is divide your shoulder measurements by two the shoulder measurement i'm working with is 14 inches 14 divided by 2 gives me 7 inches which i'll go ahead and mark out here then at this point i'm going to come down with one inch i'll come down with one inch like so to achieve the shoulder slant because our shoulders are not straight they are slanty downward so you go ahead and slant like so upward as you can see now moving on we'll go ahead and mark out the neck width now for the regular normal neck width we make use of three inches yes and for the neck um, depth, we make use of three inches as well. So this is what is used for your polo, your round collar polo. Yes, three by three. This is the, for the normal, regular neck width and depth. You can change the neck depth. That is how deep you want your neckline to be. It all depends on the style you're trying to achieve. 
next is to mark out your arm hole depth now for me i normally use a formula to get my arm hole depth which is i divide the bus circumference by six then i had 1.5 inches so the bus circumference i'm working with is 39 divided by six plus 1.5 gives me eight inches which i marked out as you can see so i'll just connect this to the shoulder slope like so So as you can see, I have connected it to that one inch I came down with at the shoulder. So next is to divide your bust circumference by 4 and then mark it out. So the bust circumference I'm working with is 39 divided by 4 gives me 9.75 which I'll go ahead and mark out here. And then I'll connect this back to this arm hole depth like so. Now that this is done, the next thing you would want to do is to draw out your arm or curve. You know your arm O is curved. Take a look at it. It is curved. So for that, we need to make this arm O curved. So to get that, you have to get the midpoint of your arm O depth. To get it, just fold over your tape like this and get the midpoint like so or you can divide your arm hole depth by two to get the midpoint so eight divided by two gives four inches right now you mark that out then next you come in with half an inch all of this is just to achieve that arm hole curve so you come in with half an inch and then we'll go ahead and connect this point to this point and this point so you can use your curve rule or you can use your free hand like me whichever you have available with you at the point in time of drafting out your basic bodies your full scale basic bodies here so we have achieved the front arm or curve yes the front arm or curve is different from the back arm or curve so this line also represents your chest line so you can go ahead and extend this line or just leave it like that so i'm going to leave it like this for now and i will extend it later next you mark out the measurement you got from your shoulder to your nipple which is also referred to as the bust point so for me the measurement i got was 10.75 inches which i am marking out that is from your shoulder to your nipple point you grab you mark it out what you got you mark it out so that is what is here so you just go ahead and connect the dots and this is referred to as the bust point so bp is the abbreviation for bust points right then next you mark from your shoulder to your under bust under bust meaning from your shoulder to underneath your bust underneath the bust right so for this i have 14.75 inches which i am marking out like so please just pay close attention it's very simple and when you practice up to three times you'll be very good at you know drafting a full scale basic bodies so i'll just go ahead and connect those dots like so as you can see and this line represents the under bust line yeah now next step is to mark out from your shoulder to your waist measurement so you can either just go ahead and take the measurement from your shoulder to your waist or you can just have three inches from your under bust line to get your waistline so this is what i always do i just had three inches from the under bust line yes or you can go ahead and measure take your measurement to be certain if you are not so sure about this method i'm using so just go ahead and mark out from your shoulder to your waistline to get the waistline now that this is done the next thing you would want to do is to divide your nipple to nipple measurements by two yeah so the nipple to nipple measurement i'm working with divided by two gives me four inches so i'm just going to mark it out on the bust point like this now nipple to nipple measurement simply refers to as the measurement you got from one side of the nipple to the other side of the nipple so you go ahead and mark it out on the bust point you mark it out on your under bust line you also mark it out on your waistline and also from your top length you go up by two inches like this now this is just to get the dart line that's the purpose for this nipple to nipple measurements after dividing it by two and you go ahead and connect this dot to give you a straight line like this so i'll be making use of a pen now please note that 
A full scale body is majorly used for sewing free tops, polos, shirts, t-shirts, and all of that anything free now there are times you might want to include your darts there are times you might not want to sew in a dart so it depends on you it depends on what you want so if you don't want to sew in a dart then there is no need for all of this um nipple to nipple measurements you just go ahead and make mark out your round bodies measurements and had your sewing allowance but in a scenario whereby you want a dart on the shirt or on the top go ahead and make use of the nipple to nipple measurement to mark out the that now after drawing the straight line the next step you would want to take is to mark half an inch on the right side of the line and also half an inch on the left side of the line like this yes that is 0.5 inches on both sides then you connect like so so you just bring out your rule or you can use your free end to connect like so so you connect from your bust point to the half an inch on both sides giving you a triangle like this so you just go ahead and connect like so so you can see we have a triangle next you do the same thing to connect it downwards like this so at the end of it it's like you have two triangles facing each other right so that's just it <laughs> so that's just it so just go ahead and connect the other side like this connect like so connect now that this is done the next step is to go ahead and mark out around bodies measurement after dividing by four so i'll be showing you different ways you can add your sewing allowance to your pattern so i'll be doing using one of the method on the front pattern and i'll be using the other method on the back pattern moving on remember on this chest line i have already divided the bust circumference i'm working with by four which I marked out to get the armhole curve. So I'll just go ahead and add my sewing allowance and I'm making use of two inches for my sewing allowance. So you can decide to make use of one inches for your sewing allowance. You can decide to make use of two inches or three inches for your sewing allowance. It all depends on how free you want the top or the shirt to be. It all depends on you, on what you want, how free you want it to be. Most times I advise you make use of, you know, um two inches or three inches like much sewing allowance in case you get fatter or you increase in your body weight or size so that whenever you want to make reamendment you can be able to reamend the outfit to fit your bigger body yes i don't know if that makes sense so i'll just go ahead and mark out the two inches for the sewing allowance here now on your bust point there's no need of you to mark out anything there just go straight to your under bust line and divide your under bust circumference by four so the under bust circumference i'm working with is 34 inches now 34 divided by four gives me 8.5 which i have marked out and i'll add the two inches for sewing allowance now please pay close attention so because we are taking out this dart we have to put back what we are taking out yes we are taking out this dart you can either sew it or cut it out so we have to put back what we are taking out so all you have to do is to measure between these lines yes you measure between these lines so here i have 0 0.625 as you can see i have 0 0.625 between the lines so i'll go ahead and put back what i just measured here the reason for doing this is to have a complete pattern or a complete basic bodice block next you go on your waistline and you divide your waist circumference by four so after dividing what i'm working with by four i have 8.75 which i've marked out and i went ahead to add two inches for the sewing allowance now i also go ahead and measure this that opening here that is between this line so i have one inch and i'll go ahead and put it back here like so next i went over to the top length and i divided the hip circumference i'm working with by four and i marked it out and also i added two inches for um sewing allowance as well like this so after doing this you go ahead and connect the dots so you can bring in your rule to connect the dots like this or you use your end to just go ahead and connect the dots
now that i've connected the dots i'll just go ahead and extend this chest line like so for now and it's time to cut this pattern out so you go ahead and cut out your pattern so you go ahead and cut it out cut 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 like so so at this point the front pattern is ready so i'm just going to bring in my rule and extend the ch this chest line further just extend it further like this and just indicates the chest line here so this is my front pattern guys it's ready so here yeah, i'll just go ahead and write the hip length so that you also know that at this top length all you have to do is to divide your hip um, circumference measurement so you just go ahead and indicate the front pattern on the pattern paper next we we'll go ahead and draft out the back pattern <laughs> so the back pattern is somehow similar to the front pattern the only different is the neckline that is the back um, neckline depth and also the armhole depth that is just the only different so you go ahead and mark out the same length you marked out for your front pattern so for me you remembered i added one inch to my full length which made it 27 inches in total so i have marked it out and i also go ahead and drew a straight line across so drafting an half scale basic bodies is quite different from drafting a full scale basic bodies so i'll do a tutorial on drafting the half scale basic bodies but for now get to practice this full scale basic borders and make sure you become good at it you know practice makes perfect so next we'll go ahead and also divide the shoulder measurement by two the same process we did for the front pattern and you just mark it out then come down by one inch like so for the shoulder slant or slope and you mark out the one inch like this and then you bring in your rule and you slant it upward so you can see it's just almost the same process we did for the front pattern now please take note of the fact that when you're working with a neck width the front neck width and the back neck width has to be the same so since i made use of three inches for the front neck width i will also make use of three inches for the back neck width the only thing that can be different when it comes to neckline for the front and the back is the neck depth that is how deep you want the neckline to be so your front neckline can be deeper than your back neckline but the neck width has to always be the same so for the regular back neck depth we make use of one inch this is what your polo or your t-shirt or your collar normally do so you make use of one inch for your regular back neck depth so you can go deeper you can depending on the style you are going for depending on the kind of neckline you are going for so after drawing the curve connecting the neck depth to the neck width i went ahead to mark out the arm or depth and you already know how i got that so go ahead and just connect to the one inch we came down with like this i hope you understand if there is any part you do not understand please just indicate on the comment section and i will try as much as possible to respond to you so next you divide your run bus measurement by four and you mark it out and you connect so my ham or depth line looks slanted so i had to straighten it out and after straightening it out i had to connect like so and don't forget to extend this line which represents the chest line yeah so after doing this next is to draw out the back arm or curve which is also quite different from the front arm or curve so get the midpoint of your arm or depth and for me i have four and then you just go ahead and draw the curve to this point like this so you can see so this is just a little way it's different from the front arm or curve this is just it guys this is just it <laughs> So after doing this, the next thing is to go ahead and mark from your shoulder to your nipple measurement. Now, please take note of the fact that some people do skip this um, point of including the bust point line on the back pattern because there is no breast at the back. But for me, I don't feel it's any biggie. You get, I only 
remove bust points when it comes to drafting and half scale basic bodies i hope you get so since this is a full scale bodies man i am going all out <laughs> so this is the bust point next you go ahead and mark out your shoulder to your under bust your shoulder to your under bust so you go ahead and do that Make sure you practice how to draft your full scale bodies and once you're good at it, you can move on to also practice and learn how to draft your half scale um, basic bodies. Yeah. So I'll just go ahead and connect the line and this line represent the under bust line. So you can just see that it's the same thing um, I did at the front pattern that I'm doing here. The only difference is the neckline and also the arm or curve so that's just it so this is the waistline and i'll just go ahead and extend it further like this after doing this the next step is to go ahead and mark out the dart line now by dividing your nipple to nipple measurement by two so after dividing mine by two i have four which i'll go ahead and mark out on the bust point on the under bust line on the waistline and on the top length you come up by two inches as well and then you, you just indicate the you know four inches like this and you go further and rule a straight line so this line you can extend it to your chest line too it's not necessary it must be at your bust point so it depends on how you like it you can extend it to your chest line because there is no breast at the back but for me this is what i normally do i just leave it at the bust point then sometimes when i feel like i you know extend it to the chest line <laughs> so this is it guys so you go ahead and come out with half an inch on both sides like this of your waistline and then you also you know draw your triangles that are facing each other that are lined on top of each other yeah you go ahead and do that so like i earlier stated please extend this line to the chest line that is the standard way it is done but for me you know sometimes i just you know switch it over a little bit <laughs> so this is it guys this is it then after doing this you also go ahead and you know start marking out your um round bodies measurements after dividing them by four and for this back pattern remember i told you earlier on that i am going to show you another way you can include your sewing allowance so you just go ahead and mark out your round bodies measurements after dividing them by four and then you put back this um that intake yes so i put it back here and then i divided my um, round waist measurement by four as well and mark it out like this and then also put back what i have between these lines here which is one inch and i'll put it back like this on the um, top length you divide your hip measurement by four and you mark it out and you connect like so so you can see i just did not include anything like swing allowance you remember for the front pattern i included my two inches swing allowance while drafting out but for this i just did not bother about including my um, two inches for swing allowance this is because i just want to explain something to you guys so you go ahead and connect so at this point your pattern is also ready now the only difference is as you can see here there is no form of sewing allowance now the advantage of this is that you are at free will to decide how many inches you want to have for your sewing allowance whenever you want to make use of the pattern I hope you understand now for the front pattern where i had it two inches for sewing allowance whenever i'm going to use make use of that pattern meaning it's always going to have two inches for sewing allowance but for this particular um, way of drafting without no sewing allowance meaning whenever you're cutting on the fabric you can decide how many inches for sewing allowance you want to have so when you're cutting on the fabric you include your sewing allowance but for the other um, front pattern for the front pattern where i included the two inches for sewing allowance meaning when i'm cutting on the fabric there's no need of adding any sewing allowance because it's already on the pattern paper so that's just a different and that's just a simple logic i hope you do understand so for me i love adding my sewing allowance to my patterns 
so i'll go ahead and just add the two inches for the sewing allowance for my pattern but then if you want to be at free will of deciding how many inches you want for the pattern whenever you want to make use of it you go ahead and draft the pattern without no sewing allowance please take note sewing allowance so that's just it so that's just a simple um, logic so at this point my back pattern is ready it's super ready so it's time to cut 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 this out cut this out so if you have a client who you always make use of the full scale basic borders um block for pattern for you can go ahead and make use of the pattern without no sewing allowance that way you are free will to decide how many sewing allowance you want whenever you're making any outfit for that client so this is it guys the patterns are ready this is the front pattern and also the back pattern put together so this is just it guys you can see the neckline you can see the hammer so those are just the different guys and this side of the back pattern is referred to as the center back yes in a scenario whereby you want to add zip to the back pattern just had 1.5 inches to your center back and this side is referred to as your center front yes it's referred to as your center front in a process whereby you want the buttons to be at the front you add two inches or 1.5 inches to your center front so that's just it and these are the pictures showing the center back and the center front on your bodies <laughs> so guys i hope this video was helpful if there is any part you do not understand just let me know in the comment section and i will try as much as possible to respond to you so if you enjoyed this video and if this video was helpful to you do well to hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up <laughs> so this is the pattern this is the full scale basic borders pattern so in my next video hopefully i'll be explaining and you know um how to draft the half scale basic borders pattern so this is it guys you can also decide to you know alter the neck if you want a v-neck for your front pattern you can do that but once you are able to draft your um full scale basic borders pattern you can be able to you know um draft any other thing it's just literally two little changes associated with them so that's it guys so see you on my next video love ya and make sure you practice 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 because always remember practice makes perfect so love ya